We begin with breaking news from Ukraine. A revolution that started with protests in the street has led to an apparent takeover in the president's office. Opposition forces have seized President Viktor Yanukovych's elaborate compound as well. They are declaring victory in the fight to force him out of power. And although the president has reportedly left Kiev, he defiantly appeared on television earlier, calling the rebellion a coup and likening it to the Nazi invasion of Germany. Meanwhile, the former Ukrainian prime minister, who was serving a seven-year sentence, sentence was released a short while ago. Yulia Tymoshenko, now a free woman, as the revolution takes hold. I want to get to the White House where the administration is reacting to all of this. NBC's Kristen Walker has more. Kristen? Well, Melissa, White House officials say they're monitoring the situation in Ukraine quite closely. They welcome the release of the former prime minister, Yulia Tomashenko. She just spoke to a large crowd in Kiev, urged opposition forces not to give up. She called them heroes. But look, this is what the White House was wanting to see. They have been advocating a swift transition to a coalition government, uh, early elections. They want to see the violence come to an end. So they believe uh, what has occurred today will help to move that process forward more swiftly. Here's a little bit more of what White House Press Secretary Jay Carney had to say in a statement that was released just a short while ago. He says, quote, going forward, we will work with our allies, with Russia and with appropriate European and international organizations to support a strong, prosperous, unified and democratic Ukraine. Going forward, the Ukrainian people should know that the United States deeply values our longstanding ties with Ukraine and will support them as they pursue a path of democracy democracy and economic development. Now, all of this comes, Melissa, amidst tensions, of course, between the United States and Russia. They have clashed over a number of issues from Iran and Syria and now Ukraine. Yesterday, President Obama spoke with President Vladimir Putin for more than an hour. It was a conversation that was initiated by President Obama. The White House describes it as constructive. Both leaders agreed that the violence needs to end. Both agreed that a plan needs to be put in place swiftly in Ukraine. Ukraine, uh, and uh, that they essentially want to see the situation there uh, come to a, a calmer state and that the uh, economy in Ukraine needs to be stabilized. So those are some of the issues on which they agreed. President Obama continued to hold out the threat of sanctions. However, of course, that's something that Russia would disagree with. Uh, but both leaders also agreed this is a very fragile uh, political agreement that is in place. So they are monitoring it quite closely as these developments continue to unravel quite quickly. Melissa. NBC's Kristen Walker at the White House. Thank you very much. Thanks. For more on this, I want to bring in Steve Clemens, Washington editor at large for The Atlantic and an MSNBC contributor as well. He joins us now live. Steve, let's, let's start with a little background first. Why is the opposition so angry at its government? Let's just bring well, our viewers up to date. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the big reasons why it is uh, uh, angry with the previous government is that over a period of time, really from 2010, uh, Yanukovych, the president, began assuming more and more powers and taking presidential authorities that didn't exist previously. That's why one of the interesting outcomes uh, that happened yesterday is they've gone back to their 2004 constitution and reduced the power of the president dramatically. And that was one of the big gains yesterday. Uh, but at the same time, he also um, robbed them of their rights of protest and the rights of civil society to function peacefully. And, he, and then after taking those powers away from them, he tried to restore them, but it set so much fear among the general populace that they may be looking at, you know, a strong man kind of thuggery approach to government that it brought everyone into the square and, and began to sort of capture the attention of Ukraine, which is a nation that is absolutely strategically consequential, both for Europe and for Russia, well, and, actually, and it's actually, economically that's, consequential. That's actually something that I, re I was really hoping to get to, because there was yeah. a decision of late that people have been very angry about to basically side with Russia over the West. Isn't that part of their opposition? Well, I, I think that, you know, the big thing is what President Obama has been saying through this whole crisis is Ukraine shouldn't be forced to pick between a, a, allegiance to Russia or an alliance and deeper economic connections with Europe. Uh, it can't have a zero sum between those two and have Ukraine that's not deeply split. Ukraine is really set right up under the um, armpit of Russia. And so it's, it's geo, you know, sort of geographically uh, in a complex position, but it matters to both ends. And to certain 
degree, you can sort of measure how well we're doing in the post-Cold War world by the, by the amount in, of integration between Ukraine and Europe, because it shows that the, that the new Russia is not necessarily trying to reset the old borders and boundaries and alliances of the Soviet Union, which is what a lot of people fear but don't want to talk so much about. So I think fundamentally that is the, that is the dividing line that everybody's been worried about with Ukraine. So as what we've been hearing about, President Obama has been speaking at length with uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin about this. What does all this mean for the United States foreign policy and our relationship with Russia? Well, I, I think that fundamentally we have to figure out whether we want to deal with Russia on an a la carte ad hoc basis in places like Syria, Ukraine, debating over Edward Snowden, other matters that we deal with globally, or whether we're going to go back and realize Russia is at this point at least the self uh, uh, impression of ascendance in the world that it matters all over the place and it's testing the United States and Europe in many and many other parts. Do we want to have a broad strategic arrangement with Russia or not? We do with China. We have the strategic and economic dialogue process with China where we talk about many things beyond bilateral relations. We talk about issues all around the world. That seems to be missing with Russia. We have a lot of contact and interaction with them, but but it seems like we are we don't have a really good strategy with Russia. They have a strategy with, with us, which is to look ascendant in the eyes of the world by giving us trouble in many of the hot spots in, in areas like Syria. Steve Clemens, thank you very much.